Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ask Rob and Rob, the show where you give us your questions and we keep giving you some answers. And this week, we'll do our very best to maintain that format because we've got two great questions in. But for us to continue with this show, of course, we need your wonderful questions. So let's give you a quick reminder of how you can get involved. Yep, all you've got to do is give us a call on 013-808-0035. That's 013-808-0035. Or, alternatively, you can go to propertyhub.net slash ask. Either method will allow you to leave us a voicemail with your question, and then we will get back to you. Jonathan did exactly that, so let's have a listen to his question. Hi, Rob and Rob. My question is around crowdfunding. I recently listened to another podcast where someone had used, more specifically, angel finance. I'm looking into this to maybe grow my portfolio quicker. The strategy for using the crowdfunding would be to buy below market value property cash, then renovate the properties, take out the cash to pay back the investors, and then keep the property for myself. Is this something you have ever considered or used or know anything about? Uh, Keep up the great podcasts. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Jonathan. It sounds like what you're describing is a joint venture. So you have the skills, the knowledge, or hopefully you do, and possibly lack the cash or enough cash. But someone else lacks the skills and knowledge, but they have cash and they see you as a good investment. And then the two of you come together and both add value in different ways. And yes, by buying below market value, renovating a property and taking cash out and paying back the investor, giving them a return, absolutely, in theory, what you've described can happen and does happen but you need to be careful and this is not just for you Jonathan but it's for everyone but lots of people talk about this strategy to newbies as a way of getting into property investment and if you're a newbie you should not be doing this because if you don't have experience of sourcing below market value renovating properties and executing this model then why would anybody with funds and some reasonable intelligence sorry but true invest in you you may be very enthusiastic And you may, on paper, have it all planned, but working this all out on paper and having the experience and those lessons locked in are two very different things. Now, if you have the experience, then absolutely go ahead and look for investors who will back you and give them an attractive return. With effort, it can be done. Just go to networking events, post on forums about your plans on a high level of what you want to do. Just generally engage with property investors on and offline, and I'm sure you'll find a backer. But if you haven't got the experience and you're unable to put a business plan together backed up with experience, then I really do think this is a a non-starter. The only people who are going to invest in you are friends, family and fools. And all could end up disappointed with your results if you're doing the learning with their money. So ideally, you should be in a position where you've implemented this strategy already, you know what you're doing, you can demonstrate your track record to people and also put together a plan of how things are going to move forward, then it's game on. But only you know your current position and anyone listening only knows their current position. And if you can understand that, which I really hope you can, then you can make the right decision. Rob's absolutely put his finger on it there when it comes to experience. I know people who actually do this. But they all started doing it when they already had a model that they'd executed successfully time and time again, and they were just coming across more deals than they could do with their own cash. At that point, they could point to the past deals that they'd done. They already had friends who'd seen what they were up to and were getting curious and interested in coming in, and it made total sense. And if this is something you're going to do, make sure that you think carefully about what you would do in situations where things don't go as planned. So the obvious one is what if you don't get the revaluation that you expect at the end and you can't get all the investors money out? What arrangement would you come to? Speak to the investor about that exact scenario at the start so they're aware that it could happen and you've agreed on what approach you'll take if it does happen. So Jonathan and anyone else listening who's got this kind of question, I know there's lots of you because it is a very popular question. Hope that's been helpful. Let's have a listen to our second question today. This one's from Rashid. Hi both. I hope you're well. I've just finished reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and one of the things the author talks a lot about is real estate, which forms sort of the foundation of his assets. One thing he talks about is how buying real estate foreclosures was one technique or strategy he used to generate quite large amounts of revenue. Now, I was wondering, what do you guys think of this as an investment strategy, both in terms of ethics and in terms of profitability? 
And secondly, do you think this is something that could be replicated in the UK? Uh, thank you for listening and answering my question and all the best. Cheers. Thank you for that question. We actually talked about this when we did a whole episode on the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and how well it had or hadn't stood the test of time. We'll link to that episode in the show notes. If you haven't listened to it already, it's worth checking out. But we actually pulled this out as what we thought was one of the worst bits of Rich Dad, Poor Dad and kind of made fun of a passage in the book a little bit. We talked about one of these ludicrously good deals that he'd done. Can it work in the UK? Well, yes, a variant of it can, but not always. And it can't always work anywhere in the US or anywhere else either. Because there will be times when the economy is bad, people are not keen on buying property, and lots of people are finding themselves getting into trouble and getting repossessed. When those situations happen, banks do not want to be holding property. They don't really know what to do with them. And so they will get rid at any price they can. And if there aren't many buyers around, of course, those prices will be low and you can get some really good deals. They don't get auctioned off on the courthouse steps, but they do go into auction or they get marketed through estate agents. But those are only narrow windows of time in the 18-year property cycle. And when that time does come, you, of course, need to have cash because mortgages will be hard to come by and be in a position to act and take advantage. So can it work? Yes, sometimes. But I think where Rich Dad Poor Dad is a bit misleading on this point is it makes it sound like it's something that anyone can do all the time. Like you could put the book down and go, oh, that sounds good. I'm off to do that right now and make it happen the next day. That's not the case, but it is worth being aware of and being prepared because when that time does come around, you can do some really great deals. So a great book, but not a perfect book. And remember, the old adage, if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is, applies to nearly everything in life. Now, some may say... That the property podcast out every Thursday is too good to be true for the price of free. But you know what? Actually, maybe we've busted that myth because we all pack on Thursday with the property podcast. So make sure you join us for that. And of course, we'll be back next week with Ask Rob and Rob. So until then, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.